This is the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge, round four, week eight, and this week we've finally begun to sling some ink. <laughs> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. If you like those things, then you might like my comic because it also features zombies. It is called Young and the Dead. It is a kids versus zombie adventure. So if you're a fan of Goonies, uh, Monster Squad, if you're a fan of horror in general, but mostly those kid-centric 80s adventure movies, if you've been around in the 80s or maybe you're just a fan of nostalgia, if you know movies like Goonies and Monster Squad, all that stuff, uh, then you'll probably be into that. Just picture that kind of thing, but with zombies. So kind of like Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. That's what my comic's all about. And this series is all about me working on this comic. And hopefully there's some information in there that's going to help you guys too on your own comic book projects. Now, the reason why I'm sharing my thoughts and my process of creating my own comic book, in addition to hopefully helping you guys out with some of the same struggles you might be having with your own, it's also to hold myself accountable. And that's one of the main principles of this challenge, the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. Now, I'm going to explain it again. If you've seen these videos, you know about it, but every one of these videos might be somebody's first time. So you kind of have to bear with me while I introduce this, just so I can let some of the newer folks know what the challenge is all about, and I will be, try to be brief. So it all started off with an artist friend of mine, Kevin Cross, who was finding it difficult to find the time to work on his own comic book project, because your life gets busy. you got a lot of stuff going on, but he he realized that if he was just to set aside 30 minutes a day at least to work on his own comic book project, then, and you know, and continue to do that and build a habit of that over 100 days straight without fail. And also, again, like I said, to hold himself accountable, he was going to let everyone know about this, put that out in the public by doing videos like this. And that's pretty much the challenge. You work on it every day for at least 30 minutes a day. I've chosen to do mine for an hour a day. You can bump it up and, and work on it more like I'm doing, but don't do less than 30 minutes a day. So find that third, because everyone has that 30 minutes a day to work on their comic. So anyway, you work on it, you do that for 100 days straight, you build the habit, and then you vlog about it or you post about it on whatever social media you want, whether you got a Discord, whether you post it on Facebook or Instagram, I'm doing YouTube. I'm doing it a little differently because I've done this challenge, this is my, like I said, my fourth round. So I'm only doing weekly updates, but if you're just starting out, it's really important and really crucial that you do one of these updates every day so that's the challenge that's what it's all about in order to give you a little recap of where I am with my challenge last week week seven I had completed page one the penciling for page one of my comic book young and the dead issue number five and I was a good portion of the way through penciling uh, page two I, and I think you know I, I almost it's it was almost complete by the time I, I finished last week and since then I have completed that but that's rolling into this week so what have I done this week so for this week week eight I completed the last little bit of penciling I had to do on page two and I have inked page one and I'll show a little bit of the process so you can kind of see how that goes uh, and I've sped it up a little bit but that's page one of issue five young and the dead and then so far um, a good portion of the way done with the inks on page two now right now that puts me about pretty much a page a week pencil and inks if you break that down because it seems like I'm doing two page pencils then inking those two pages one of the things that I'm trying to do this time around with uh, with f round four of this challenge is I'm trying to speed up the process and some of the ways I'm doing that are by digitally penciling the pages I find that I can go a little faster with that I have chosen to ink traditionally uh, on this issue kind of to match the the whole style of the book so it doesn't look a little different from issue four to issue five and six uh, but I've explained my whole reasoning for for the way I'm doing it as far as digitally penciling and traditionally inking on the last episode so I won't get too much into that but I'm trying to do a number of different things to help speed up the process so it won't take so long for me to put out one of these issues so one of the things that I'm doing is I'm looking back at the last time I worked on an issue uh, when I did the challenge for that one and I'm trying to kind of compare and see how far along I am now the last time when I was working on issue four uh, and we were around right now we're around 59 days in thereabouts and I, at that point of the last challenge, last time I took the challenge with, with that book, with the previous issue, uh, I had complete, I just completed, I think, three pages, pencils and inks. 
And so I'm a little far behind, but if you've been following along, you'll know that I also not only wrote the script for issue five, but also issue six. So that pushed me a little bit back. And I'm finding, I'm at that point where I think, I think I'm, I'm, catching up. Even though I'm sort of a page behind, I think I'm going to shoot past that and then we're, pretty soon we're going to be way ahead because I spent a lot of other upfront time doing some other things like that additional issue and everything like that, scripting it anyway. So I'm on track to kind of pull ahead and pretty soon I think we'll be way ahead of schedule. And like I said, if I'm doing uh, about a page pencil and ink a week, just working on it, like I said, an hour a day, um, I think I think we're going to be making some pretty good progress and hopefully Hopefully this book will come out a lot faster than the other issues. That's the plan anyway. And you know, even though I set out to do at least that one hour a day, I'm also trying to put in a little more time. And because of the nature of this challenge, the whole reason why I talked about it before with just trying to find time to work on your comic, we all have busy lives and everything like that. Last week was super busy for me, so I didn't get to put in any extra time. I had a lot of stuff going on. I sort of had a little bit of a big sort of birthday celebration. A lot of my friends kicked in and it was just pretty amazing. Uh, and we're gonna talk about inking today, but one of the things that I wanted to show you guys before we get into that is this present that a good friend of mine Joshua Kimball. If you watch the Artcaster sh show that I do every week with Josh, uh, this was his present to me, and it is his version of Young and the Dead. He did this awesome poster, sort of an homage to the old EC comics, horror comics, using Young and the Dead, and it just blows me away because I haven't really seen too many people, uh, you know, take on my characters and everything like that. And to see Josh do this and and give this to me as a gift. It's pretty awesome. And uh, he also gave me a few copies of this print here. And I mean, and we're gonna get into inking a little bit and I wanna show you, cause I also have the original. He gave me that as a gift too. But I'm gonna throw, I'm probably gonna throw some of these up on my, uh, on my website. If you wanna go to my store, if you're interested in this print, uh, it will be available. Josh gave me a few of these to sell myself. So, <laughs> I mean, the gifts just keep on coming. That's pretty awesome. But there's a limited amount because I got, I think, 10 of these. I kept a couple for myself. I gave one to the comic book store owner where I picked this thing up at. And I'm gonna, I'm also gonna do a whole video recapping that whole adventure because it was pretty awesome. My girlfriend put it all together. It was a big treasure hunt going from one place to another. And it was just really amazing, but it's not the kind of thing that I would probably put on my YouTube channel because uh, I don't know that everyone here would care about it. But I'm gonna throw it up on my Patreon. So if you're interested in that, you can check out my Patreon. I'll put that, I'll, once I get it all edited together, it should be pretty fun and for my patrons, I think they'd probably really get a kick out of that because it was such a fun thing. But anyway, and you can kind of see my reaction when I open this gift from Josh. But so I'm gonna, I've got maybe like five of these that I'm not keeping for myself. You know, there were some changes that Josh wanted to make. Maybe we'll do those changes. We'll put another one up for it. This, this version, uh, this is, there'll be like five of them that are gonna be available on my website. So if you want one of these, you might want to snatch them up before, they, before they're all gone. So, I, you know, I already showed you one of my pages and I work in a pretty limited line style. Uh, I don't, there's not a lot of heavy blacks and things like that, at least for this particular comic book. I got this original from Josh that I will show you. And I mean, we're talking about inking today. If you want to see a master at inking, I mean, look at this. I mean, everything Josh does is hand done. Uh, everything from the, the letters, this is not like typeset or anything like that. This is the actual hand done letters. And I, I'm looking at this and I see, I don't even see any like correction, like white out or anything on this whole page. I mean, it, it's just perfect. And the blacks are just super heavy and it's solid. And this is just amazing. I can't wait to frame this thing. So I just want to thank Josh again for sending this out to me. It's just, it, it's just, it blows me away that he did this. Um, and then on top of that, to send me the prints and everything, and not only to, to ink it and illustrate it, ink it, and then also do a colored version with the print. I mean, it is, I can't, I can't thank him enough for this, but I just wanted to show you, uh, since we're talking about inking, I thought this was apropos because it's just, his ink and his cross hatching, and he does use a lot of heavy blacks and stuff. So I'm sure it takes him a lot longer to do these pages than than the kind of inking and everything that I'm doing. And that's good to mention because there are so many different styles of inking, and while Josh has a completely different style from my own, uh, neither one is right or wrong. It's just our own particular style. So. 
I've shared some of my tools for inking before and other things, but like like I went through the whole you know thing about what the challenge is all about again, even though people have already seen it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I could I could show my tools on every single episode, and I'd still get questions like, "What kind of tool is that?" So I'm going to go over some of my inking tools again, for just as a refresher, if you're interested. But again, just like the different styles, know that the tool isn't going to make you a better artist. You know, I love great tools and everything's like that, but it doesn't really matter what tool tools you're using uh, and you know these are gonna be traditional tools I've done I've been doing a lot of digital inking even though on this I'm choosing to go the traditional inking route just so everything matches up um, but the digital inking tools I'm, I'm finding I'm I think I'm probably a little bit faster uh, with the digital inks but in any case I've made the decision to go traditional inks on this particular issue so I'm gonna share with you some of my tools there's also a link in the description where you can get some of these if you want to try them out but you know it's all about experimenting and try different tools just because these tools work for me they may not work for you or they might so it's just trying them out but anyway so my process right now like I said I am working digitally I have a printer that can print on 11 by 17 so what I do is I print and I do all my digital inks blue line so they're not going to photograph when I scan them back in so what I'll do is I just get some of these uh, comic book pages and they're already pre-rolled even though I'm using my own templates so I just I don't know if you can see that they're pre-rolled here if you want to draw on them I just flip them around I run them through my printer and then I've got the blue lines and everything like you can probably see right here you can kind of see this is just the digital inks printed out in blue and then I'm starting to go over it with my with my black inks now in the past when I've done my inking I have always used a brush I'm not really you know I've never mastered like the crow quill uh, and although I use microns and things like that and I'll show you some of those uh, for ruling out everything typically I'll use the brush because it gets a nice line weight this is a Winsor Newton series 7 uh, that is my primary brush even though I'll show you in a minute I'm doing something a little differently and then as far as ink uh, I prefer this deleter black number five I think there's a number four and a number five I think five is the matte finish if I'm correct I could be wrong uh, one is a little glossy and one's uh, one's flat and I prefer like flat matte finish and then uh, for my whiteout for my corrections I've been using deleter number two and I think there's a deleter white number two as well uh, but these are great inks I really like the way those work another option sometimes I will use this is an acrylic ink it's dr. PH Martin it's called black star and it's acrylic so I mean and it's super super heavy blacks and everything so I like that you'll notice that this one has uh, an eyedropper which is convenient because the reservoir that I use I just use these you know to put my ink in I just use these little bottle caps these water bottle caps and it's really convenient to take that eyedropper and drop it in the deleter ink that I use right here it doesn't have an eyedropper so you can go on Amazon and you can pick up some of these little pipettes I don't know what they're normally used for but I use them to you just as an eyedropper I dip them in the ink and then I, I fill my little reservoir and then I use my my brush and everything and it seems to work pretty well although all that time believe it or not just the amount of time it takes to to dip to fill the the reservoir to dip the pen in to make sure you've got just amount of the right amount of ink on your page or on your on your brush rather before you go to your page that that takes up a lot of time so this time around I decided you know what I'm gonna go straight to using just brush pens now in the I've always used brush pens for sketches and things but I found that sometimes I don't have as good a control with the brush pen and sometimes if they fray a little uh, you know it they, they don't seem to last as long I mean they're re, a lot of some of these are refillable but they they just seem to fray and if you don't get them right when they're new sometimes you know all of a sudden you get this real heavy stroke that you weren't planning on so I'm trying to be really careful with these but using the brush pens it just it seems to go a lot faster because I'm not constantly dipping my pen so I think right now so far I'm pretty happy with the page one and the page two that I've started on using just the brush pen uh, so if I can keep it going and I just got to be a little careful because like I said sometimes they don't give me as much of a control as the brush but it, it's gonna shave some of that time off there so that's why I'm switching uh, and I'm using right now primarily I am using this I believe this is a Kiritake sumo brush 
And another brush, this is a little cheaper, a little more uh, more disposable. This is a zebra brush pen, I believe. And they're all in Japanese, so I can't, I can't really tell you exactly what they are, but there are links in the tools. There's a there's an Amazon page where you can find all this stuff. And, uh, you know, try them out. They're great brushes. I like them a lot. Also, the Pentel Pocket Brush is a good one. A lot of people recommend that. But honestly, even though it's a little more expensive, this Kiritake Sumo Brush... Um, I really love this brush. Now for ruling out my panel borders and for more of my like perspective shots and things, uh, things that you need sort of a straight edge for, I use this. It is a parallel glider or I, I just call it a rolling ruler and it's got these little wheels on it. You want to get the good one. This has got a, a nice metal uh, base here and metal wheels, not the plastic ones because those tend to shift a little bit. So you want to invest in a good uh, parallel glider, but these are great and uh, gone are the days when I used to, I mean, I, on my drafting table, I've got, you know, you've got the T-square and you've got triangles and everything, but this thing is so easy because once you line it up, it just kind of will roll down and everything and every the lines all stay where they need to be. And this is a great tool. Also, there is a link to that in that Amazon link for where all the tools are that I use. There are also a number of templates that you can use. Yeah, I've got circle templates, ellipses templates, and these are great for like if you're drawing wheels or something in perspective these ellipses work really well and uh, even though now with this issue like with the car that I did this car right here uh, I did all those wheels I just kind of did those freehand so you can I'm not worried too much about it being a little rough um, but if you want to be more precise, you can use those ellipses templates and circle templates and things like that. You can also use French curves if you need to draw something that has a little more of a curvature to it. Or this is a really cool tool. It is sort of this bendable, adjustable ruler. You can bend it into whatever shape. This one's old, so it doesn't keep its shape. But if you get a new one, you can bend it to how you want. And if you just need to draw some weird curve like that, these are great for that. As far as inking the lines, I use I use Microns or these Copic Malk multi-liner they come in different weights for my panel borders i usually use like a a number what is it a number eight and and then i go down depending on you know because i want my panel borders to be probably the thickest as far as some of those lines and then i'll i'll use the the lower numbers and everything for perspective drawings and all that kind of stuff and sometimes i'll use this i think that number eight is the heaviest that they probably make uh if something's way close in the foreground, I will probably use that. And then as things recede into the background, I'll just go with, with a thinner line as we go back. Now, the same way that I would use the white ink, uh, this deleter white ink, uh, I've also begun using either a gel pen or this is a Sino, uh, I think this is a jelly roll or a Sino gel pen. Uh, these are really good for, you know, adding stars or if you just need some, you know, white hatches and everything like that. I use these as well. But yeah, those are some of the tools that I use when traditionally inking. Like I said, if I'm doing digital inking, I love Clip Studio Paint. It's got just enough correction, and you can adjust the correction, but the way it shifts and everything without making any adjustments, it's just got, you know, it'll just correct it just enough. And I'm finding the older I get, not only in my eyesight, I mean, now I've got to put definitely put on reading glasses when I'm doing these detail work and everything like that, but I'm also finding my hand isn't quite as steady as it is. So even though, so, you know, so I just got to go a little slower with my traditional stuff when I'm doing that because uh, it's just I can't I can't just sling that ink like I used to. But the, the other thing is uh, when I'm working digital, you know, in Clip Studio, it just got a little bit of a correction that just helps me out so much uh, and it does kind of speed up the process. So maybe who knows in my next comic book project when I'm not trying to match an existing style, uh, maybe I'll go full digital. We'll find out. But anyway, I just wanted to share some of the, the tools and everything. A few techniques and stuff that I use when digitally or, and traditionally inking. But anyway, for those of you that weren't familiar with the tools that I use for traditionally inking, I just wanted to share some of those with you. And if you've seen those before, maybe it's a good refresher course or whatever, I don't know. But I want to know, what do you guys use to ink? Are you strictly digital? Do you use traditional tools? And if so, which tools do you use? Do you use some of the same things that I use? Or do you have your own you know, particular set of tools that you use that you can't live without uh, let me know it's I'm always up for new recommendations 
uh, but I'm pretty happy with the stuff that I'm using. But uh, I'll keep an eye out and uh, an open mind to uh, some of the other tools that might be out there that may work a little better than what I have. But anyway, that's all I have to say for this eighth week of the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. I will be back next week for week nine, and I'll see you then. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.